at what point did you decide I want I, I'm done with this? At some point, it was like, well, I never felt like I was enough when I was a girl, but I feel the same exact way as a boy now. I guess I just can't be good enough as either. So maybe I'm not either. Maybe I'm just non-binary. Maybe I'm something between the two sexes. But no matter what I did, no matter what I called myself or what pronouns I used or how I, how I dressed, I just kept getting worse. It wasn't up until uh, at some point in my late in my junior year that I realized just what I was doing to myself, that it was making things worse and I couldn't go back. And that was when um, I started to learn about things like uh, like motherhood and parenting and how how children's minds develop and how they see the world. That it was like, wow, this is, I didn't know all this. That That's really important to me. And I want to be a mother one day. But how am I if I'm going to, if I'm on these medications that, are, that might affect my ability to have kids. And now that I I can't breastfeed, I just realized how big, just how important that really is, that breasts aren't just a sexual object, that there's so much more than something to be played with or to feed a child with. Because even breastfeeding is very important to the bond between a mother and her child and things like, um, well, breast milk, it has things like uh, like pre and probiotics in it that help baby's immune system develop. And breasts and physical affection in general help to regulate a baby's body temperature and uh, other parts of their health. And I'm not going to have that anymore. I never, I never will. And it was taken away from me before I even got to become a woman, before I understood what that meant. And that was, that really horrified me. I, I couldn't keep living like that because now I knew what it really meant. What, when you had that realization, what did you do? Um, well, first I went through a few, a few weeks of just the most horrific distress and not being able to, to focus on anything really. I cried quite a bit and I withdrew pretty much completely. And then I finally came to terms with the fact that I'm still a woman and nothing could change that. And I, w I was still kind of stuck in the mindset of I could just identify out of whatever I was feeling. So I didn't really, I was still kind of wondering like, well, what is my identity now? But now my transition was, was over for good. And I told my mom, I told a friend of mine, and I just didn't know what to do with myself for a while. I, I grew out my hair. I started buying new clothes, but... Did you stop taking testosterone? Yeah, I took my final testosterone shot um, almost two years ago at this point. And in May of 2021. I was, I was 16. Are you... Do you know if you're able to have kids? I haven't gotten a fertility test yet. Um, I got my period back uh, about two years, no, um, two months after stopping testosterone very quickly. And uh, my periods seem to be, re be regular now, which is a good sign. And now, like, based on, like, the, the symptoms that I'm experiencing at a given time, I, I, can, I can tell which part of the cycle I'm at. It's very, like, it's not... It's a possibility that I could be having and ovulatory cycles, but I think I'll be able to conceive a kid. 
You I just don't you know, know if mm-hmm. like how basically skipping half of puberty mm-hmm. might affect other parts of that, like my egg quality, whether my hips mm-hmm. have expanded enough to safely naturally mm-hmm. give birth. Um, but you started puberty blockers a f- several years into pu- puberty. Yeah. So there are obviously detransitioners who they had puberty blockers before they even had a puberty. So I think that, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to pray and hope for that for you. Thank you. <laughs>